Economic growth. Economic growth is an increase in the amount of goods and services produced per head of the population over a period of time. National output is total value of goods and services, and this can also be an increase which will cause economic growth. GDP, which is gross domestic product, is the total market value of all final goods and services. This will be provided by an economy with its factors of production, which includes land, labor, capital and enterprise and this will be in a given period of time so here are the four factors of production now here are some important definitions nominal gdp which is the value of output produced in an economy in a period of time measured at now this is a twist at their current market values or prices is the nominal gdp Real GDP is the value of output produced in an economy in a period of time measured assuming the prices are unchanged over time. So this is basically the difference that nominal is the current market values or prices which influence the prices. Real is the assumption that the prices are not changed. And this GDP in constant prices provides a measure of the real output of a country. Then GDP per head or capita. So this is the measure of the average output or income per person in an economy. Now this takes into account the population and it provides a good measure of the living standards of an economy. So now to calculate GDP per capita, you have a formula which you can use, which is basically GDP divided by population. So whenever you're asked to calculate the GDP per capita, you can use this formula, which is GDP divided by population. Now an increase in real GDP over time will indicate economic growth as goods and services will be produced have increased. It indicates that the economy is utilizing its resources better or its productive capacity has increased. Now on a PPC curve, the economic growth will be shown by an outward shift of the PPC. This is also known as the potential growth. Actual growth occurs when an economy moves from a point inside the PPC to a point closer to the PPC. Now here's the diagram. So in this day you have capital goods and you have consumer goods. But instead you could also write good X or good Y. And here in this PPC curve, your economy is at point A. Now, due to an increase in economic growth, it moves to point B. Causes of economic growth. So, first is discovery of more natural resources. More resources mean that the productive capacity has increased and the discovery of oil and gas reserves have enabled a lot of economies such as Norway, Saudi Arabia and Venezuela etc. to grow rapidly. So, this increases the growth. Then, investment in new capital and infrastructure. The investment in new machines, buildings, technology, etc. has enabled firms and economies to expand their production capacities. Investment in modern infrastructure such as airports, roads, harbors, etc. have improved access and communication in economies. This helps achieve quicker and more efficient production. Technical progress, so new inventions, production processes, etc. can increase the productivity of existing resources in industries such as strategic industries and boost the economic growth. Also, increasing the quantity and the quality of the factors of production, so a larger and a more productive workforce will increase the GDP and more skilled and the more knowledgeable and productive the human resources that thus help increase economic growth. Similarly, good quality capital, use of better natural resources, innovative entrepreneurs all aid economic growth in the long run. Now, reallocating resources. So this is moving the resources from a less productive use to a more productive use. This will improve the economic growth. Now, let's have a look at the benefits. So there'll be a greater availability of goods and services, which will increase the satisfaction of consumers as it will complete the wants and needs. This will increase consumer choice. Also, employment opportunities and incomes will increase. In underdeveloped or developing economies, economic growth can drastically improve living standards and bring people out of absolute poverty. It also increases the sales, profits and business opportunities. The rising output and demand will encourage investment in capital goods for further production, which will increase the long-run economic growth. 
Also, there will be a low and stable inflation rate, and if the growth in output matches growth in demand, increased tax revenue for government as incomes and spending rise, that can be invested in public goods and services. So this tax revenue will be invested. Now the disadvantages. So firstly, technical progress may cause capital to replace labor as they're more efficient, causing rise in unemployment. This will be disastrous for highly populated, underdeveloped and developing economies, pulling more people into relative poverty. Also, scarce resources are used up rapidly when production rises. Natural resources may get depleted over time, causing scarcity. Increasing the production can increase negative externalities such as pollution, deforestation, health problems. Climate change is a consequence of rapid global economic growth. If the economy produces over its productive capacity, which is overproduction, and if the growth in demand outstrips the growth in output, economic growth may cause inflation. Economic growth has also been accused of widening income inequalities in developing economies because rich investors and businessmen gain more than the working class and poor during the growth. The benefits of growth are not evenly distributed. This will cause relative poverty to rise. Sustainable economic growth is basically a rise in the output, the rise in GDP, and the rise in productivity or productive capacity. Now, all of this is basically the definition of an economic growth. But what's the twist here is that sustainable economic growth is when there is no harm to the environment. So the output will increase, the GDP will increase, and the productivity will increase without harming the environment. And this you could write as a definition. And it will also cause all the resources to stay safe and not become scarce. So you could uh, mostly use this term sustainable economic growth so that is a new word in your answer and that can also help you gain more marks for your paper too recession is the phase where there is a negative economic growth now recession is the complete opposite of economic growth here the real gdp will fall it happens after there is a rapid economic growth high inflation during the boom period will cause consumer spending to fall and causes downturn the workers will demand more wages as the cost of living will increase and the price of raw materials will also rise, leading to firms cutting down production and laying off workers. Now here unemployment will rise and incomes will fall. Now all of this is causing low living standards. So the living standards in the country will also fall down. The causes are the financial crisis, which is a bank having shortage of liquidity, reducing the lending and reducing investment. A rise in interest rates, which will increase the cost of borrowing and reduce demand. Fall in real wages, caused when wages do not increase in line with inflation, leading to falling incomes and demand. A fall in consumer or business confidence reduces both supply and the demand. A cut in government spending. So when government cuts spending, demand will fall as there will be less provision of goods and services. Trade wars, so businesses may be reluctant to invest during a trade war, causing the supply to fall. Supply side shocks, so here is an example, a rise in oil prices will cause inflation and lower the purchasing power parity. Then black swan events, so these are unexpected events that are very hard to predict. And here's an example, the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, which is still now, which is still continuing now, which disrupted travel, supply chains, and normal business activity, as well as consumer demand had caused recession in many countries. Consequences, firms go out of business because the demand will fall. And if the demand falls, firm will be forced to either reduce production to a level that is sustainable or to close shop. Unemployment. Cuts in production will cause lots of people to lose work. Fall in income. Cuts in production will also cause fall in incomes. A rise in poverty and inequality. Unemployment and lack of incomes will put a lot of people into poverty. And this will increase the inequality as the rich will still find ways to earn. A fall in asset prices. So fall in house prices or stock market. The recession will trigger a crash in the stock markets and other asset markets as investors and consumers' confidence in the well-being fall of the economy during the recession. 
the shares owned by investors will be worth less. A higher budget deficit. Due to falling consumption and incomes, the government will see a fall in tax revenue which will cause a budget deficit to occur. Then permanently lost output. So as firms go out of business and employment falls, it results in a permanent loss of output as the economy moves inwards from its PPC. So here is the PPC curve for recession. So here you can write good X and here a good Y on the X axis. Then you have your PPC curve. Initially your economy is at point A, but due to the recession there is an inward shift which will cause the economy to reach at point B.